to our reflective service today, online and read at home. The church is closed during February, but we can record our service from here, so I hope you enjoy seeing it again. It's just Rachel, Jackie, myself and Alan on camera today. We do look forward, however, to a day when we can all return here to worship and to fellowship together. And so this morning it's good to be together again, nevertheless, in our homes. It is the second Sunday before Lent, so that makes it eight weeks to Easter Sunday. Now if I said to you that our annual sunrise service on Easter Sunday, if we are allowed to gather, will be at the location directed by these three words, dome, closet and quest, Will you know exactly where to go? Some of you may be able to work out that three words already. The rest of you may be mystified. So more about those three words shortly. Now today in our call to worship, the psalmist looks at God, the source of life and light. And we reflect on Jesus, the light of life. And in our main reflection, we look at some of Jesus' most well-known words in Matthew's Gospel. We are looking at words today. Words that help us to locate where we are, and words that help us to express our deeper feelings in these anxious days. God is present with us today, now, and, let's, and let us seek him, and ask for his blessing as we commit to this time of worship and praise and reflection on our words together. Amen. The call to worship is taken from Psalm chapter 36, verses 7 to 9, the life and light of God. How priceless is your unfailing love, O God, People take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast in the abundance of your house. You give them drink from your river of delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. God will protect those who respond to his love like a mother bird protecting her young under her wings. God will provide not just for their necessities, but enough to enjoy and celebrate. Furthermore, God is the source and sustainer of all life and light, symbolising goodness, truth, justice and love. Light by which we can see, really see, life. In the Gospels, Jesus is called the true light. And since we know Jesus is God, the psalmist is writing about him too, the light of life. Amen. Now for our prayers of thanks and praise, let us pray. God our Father, we thank you for revealing to us your love through your Son Jesus. We praise you that you open our hearts to receive your grace, so that we can live for you in harmony. Thank you that by your Spirit we receive in our hearts the presence of Christ to nourish our lives so that the good fruit of your spirit will grow, reflecting Christ within. Lord Jesus, forgive us when the differences between us offend others and make us afraid and withdraw into ourselves, and our trust in you and one another suffers. By your spirit and its enlightening and transforming power, help us to rest in you, so that we can experience the life and joy you want so much to share with us. Amen. Now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Joseph Scriven, who wrote the hymn, endured tragedy and grief, but devoted his life to serving others. He knew the true friendship of Jesus in difficult times. We too can find relief from our burdens and weariness when we turn to the Lord as a friend. What a friend we have in Jesus.
divided up into a grid of three metres by three metres squares. And each small square is uniquely defined by a combination of three different words. It is a mapping grid reference system covering the whole world and amazingly all the seas. It is different from the Ordnance Survey National Grid Reference System, which many of us I'm sure we're familiar with. And that uses a grid of one kilometre squares, although they can be divided, subdivided. But what three words doesn't rely on landmarks as much as it is a fixed grid all over the surface of the terrain and sea on Earth. And if I was to look up the three words for exactly where I'm standing right now in the pulpit, my phone tells me that I'm at location Cherry, Ideal and Saints. And the location of the piece of ground outside our entrance in the vestibule is Noting, React and Survey. What value is that, you might think? I'll press on. And there are enough English words uh, to use as the current number of words uh, usefully and estimated at the moment are about 175,000. And so the combinations of what three words are therefore endless. And the idea is that anyone with a location of a set of three words can navigate accurately to that square anywhere in the world wherever you are, in whatever terrain. Now many of the emergency services are using it today because it's quite simple and it's becoming more popular. But what proved its value to me is when friends of ours who were on holiday last summer walking high in the hills of the Lake District had an accident and Chris broke her leg quite badly. Her husband John rang the mountain rescue and between them they were trying to establish where they were located. The rescue team then said, have you got the what three words app by any chance? And John said, yes, I have. And so he checked their location when he got his phone out, opened the app, high on the hill in the middle of nowhere, and he was able to give them the three words for where they were. And the rescue team checked it straight away and said, I can see where you are and we're on our way. And so just three words saved them. Now I wonder what three words you would use to describe yourself and how you're feeling as you hear or read this reflection today. Where would you be on the map? Where are you in these anxious days? COVID-19 has impacted everyone. Though all of us have unique experiences and perspectives, I would imagine there are some words that would keep reoccurring in your lives. Maybe sad because of the pain of bereavement. Anxious with concerns over health or finances or relationships. Frustrated because of perceived poor decisions in government and the knock-on effects. But maybe hopeful because of news about the vaccine program or beyond that because of hope in God, hope in the gospel. And in conversations I have had with you and family and other ministers the word that seems to occur the most is weary. Weary of lockdown, weary of homeschooling, weary of having to make endless adjustments to work, weary of making plans when everything is uncertain, weary of being confined to home, weary of bad news on the TV, weary of Zoom. Weary of physical isolation, not seeing faces, shaking hands, hugs, or singing together, tea and coffee together.
Very rarely does Jesus give a window into himself. But we can find hope and comfort and strength in him, in the words he uses to describe himself, his words. He said, I am gentle and humble, or lowly, in heart. Now that doesn't mean he's a pushover, that means he has enormous inner strength. And because of his tenderness, he gives a beautiful and amazing invitation to us all. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. And he makes the most wonderful promise to those who do come to him. I will give you rest. And if you were to come to Jesus app, the Bible, which also covers the world and has many, many words, and you put in even just one word, weary, or another like burdened, and see what it says, there will be much within it to help and to rescue and to save and to guide and to give rest. Amen. Our second hymn this morning speaks of God coming in love, coming close to those who walk his way. Special words in this song, love and peace and joy and grace. When we sing of grace, the grace of God comes close to those whose grace is spent, those whose hope is bruised and bent. The love of God comes close.
We come now to celebrate and remember in the sacramental communion. And so welcome to our simple communion. We are scattered, but we are brought together as we remember. So let these symbols of bread and wine help to make Jesus real to us in his body and blood. A body that was broken for us and blood that was shed for us. And in these sacraments, we are made one with him, delivered from the power of death into his kingdom of life and of love. As we gather, we remember that Jesus was born of Mary. He lived our common life on earth. He revealed the love of the Father. He showed us the way to live. He suffered and died for us. On the third day, God raised him from the dead and he is present with us through the Holy Spirit. In his presence and in the company of all God's people, we celebrate the Lord's Supper. And for all this, we thank God and we join with all his people on earth in joyful thanks and praise. Amen. And let us hear now the words of the institution of this feast as they are given to us by the Apostle Paul. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. To help us reflect on the words of communion, we will sing the last verse of the song by John Bell. The Son of God comes close in bread and wine. Lord, 
Amen. And so when Jesus had given thanks, he broke the bread and he said, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So let us take the bread and eat. We pray for wisdom and compassion 
and authority for those with heavy responsibility. And we thank you for the work of the scientific community and that the vaccination programme is now well underway with the first 10 million achieved this week. We pray for the supply, the distribution and administering of the vaccine, that it will continue to be successful. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the life and inspiration of 100-year-old Captain Sir Tom Moore, who died this week. He and many of his generation are a testament to those who deal with life gently and compassionately, and with bravery and hope for the future. Thank you for his wisdom, which resonates with the hope that Jesus gives to the weary, that the sun will shine on you again and the cloud will go away. Captain Tom was always hopeful in the face of adversity and we pray that this wisdom will sustain us and help us look ahead to that day when all shall be well. And finally, Father God, you call us to abide in your love in all we say and do. Touched by your goodness, grant us to be a reflection of that love in our homes, in our workplaces, and our church. And Lord Jesus, gentle and humble of heart, give us a poverty of spirit, so that we may welcome the unexpected with your grace. Amen. Amen. Our third song this morning takes words from Isaiah chapter 55. Seek ye the Lord, all ye people. Let us seek the Lord, and he will refresh us with his grace, his joy, and his love. Seek ye the Lord.
about his rest for a weary and burned world. A final closing prayer. Loving God, when we feel weary or burdened, remind us that when we come to you, we can find a rest that brings help and strength. Teach us to learn from you and to see that your ways are easy and light. May we reflect this to others who are also weary. Amen. And so to you, our dear church family and our friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen.